For just over two months, the Los Angeles Clippers were the hottest team in the NBA. On February 5th, they finished up a stretch where they went 26-5 and and were 34-15, and just a half game out of the first seed in the Western Conference. Since then, it's been a different story, as the Clippers have gone 10-12, and on the second-worst defensive rating in the league, and are currently the fifth seed with one of the tougher remaining schedules. So what's the better representation of this Clippers team? The one we saw for two months? Or this current version? I'm going to take a deeper look to find out. When looking at the Clippers' run from December to February, the first thing that stood out was they had a shooting stretch teams can only dream of. In those 31 games, they shot 51% from the floor, 42% from three, and 84% from the free throw line. That's an incredible 31-game stretch from a player, let alone an entire team. But wait, it gets crazier. Kawhi Leonard played 27 games in this run. In those games, he averaged 26 points while shooting 57%, including 50% from three and 94% from the free throw line, an MVP-worthy stretch. Leonard since then has shot 51% from the floor, but his three-point shooting percentage has dropped to 32% in his last 22 games, though after a stretch that hot, regression was to be expected. The crazy part is, the Clippers' stars and role players were red hot from three at the same time. Paul George during that 31-game stretch was shooting 44% from deep on high volume. The same could be said for Norman Powell, and then James Harden was hitting 42% of his attempts from three. Unfortunately, the Clippers have seen three-point variants since then. Despite George and Powell still shooting very well from three, they've been a middle-of-the-pack shooting team from there in their last 22 games. Considering how many of the team's attempts are off the dribble, that's a more reasonable expectation given the shot difficulty. While the Clippers' defense has been below average all year, they've been reeling on that end of the floor for over a month now. Since February 6th, they're 29th in defensive rating and are getting beaten a variety of ways. Remember that three-point variance I mentioned? In the last 22 games, the Clippers have allowed the fourth most threes in the NBA, as their opponents have shot just under 40% from deep. The Clippers also lack size, and that has shown itself recently, as they've allowed an average of 52 points in the paint, and are allowing second chances due to difficulty limiting offensive rebounds. The Clippers have also struggled to force turnovers, and opponents are capitalizing on fast breaks as the Clippers have allowed nearly 17 points per game off them in this recent stretch. Another problem the Clippers ran into recently was injuries. When you have two players on max contracts like Leonard and George, depth can be hard to come by. The Clippers since February 6th have four players who have played at least 10 minutes a game for them who have had a net rating of minus 5.5 or worse when they're on the floor. Granted, not all of those players will crack the postseason rotation, but it's an issue when every game means so much to your playoff seating. So should we panic about the Clippers? It truly depends on what your expectations were. If you thought there were a title contender, it's probably fair to. While we've seen teams like the Heat last year catch fire from three leading to a deep playoff run, the Clippers shooting from December to early February isn't a realistic expectation. Their struggles defending the three-point line are a theme now, but their lack of interior size has been a recurring issue and could be the difference in various matchups. Given Kawhi Leonard's playoff track record and Ty Lue's ability to make adjustments, it's tough to completely count them out. Though various signs suggest the Clippers' torrid 31-game stretch was the outlier when assessing the roster top to bottom.